Hello, and welcome to another episode of Come, Let's Sit Down and Talk. I am Master Life Coach Michelle Kennedy, known as Miss Uh. Come through here and we'll get you together. Uh, our guests call me Miss Get You Right. So if you're wrong, she I'll gonna keep, get you right. I get you right. So today we have Mr. Trey Ford, and he is our guest on the set. It is such a pleasure to have you. Such a mover and a shaker in the city of Jacksonville. How are you today, Trey? I'm well. As you just said, I've been moving and shaking today. <laughs> so we've got the, at the time of this recording, at least the Natural Beauty Fest, Jax, which is new to Jacksonville. And mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a staple here. So I've been running around trying to get my booth set up and delivering things and not remembering things. I need to, get, Coach, get you right today. <laughs> You should have called me out and hooked you up with You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. So, Trey, tell us about you. Tell us where you're from, what you got going on. Yeah. So, the backstory, I'm, I'm Louisville born, but Florida made. So, I moved from Louisville, Kentucky two weeks after I was born. Grew up in Miami, then transplanted to Jacksonville in, in middle school. From here, I went to college at the University of Florida, and I actually studied agricultural operations management. So I always like to tell people that because they're like, don't get the correlation between what I'm doing now and I'm, I'm sitting on that right now. But at the University of Florida, I got into a few marketing companies, ended up starting a magazine out there after I graduated from school there. Mm -hmm. So I never got straight into agriculture and it was a construction degree really. And yet, so I hadn't gotten into that yet because a lot of my skill set and gifting was in the marketing side of things and mm -hmm. selling and, and bringing people together. And so now I would say most people know me for Black Films Matter, which is a film programming company. And basically all that means is that we put on screenings. Usually a film programmer puts on festivals. Mm -hmm. We do our screenings one at a time. A festival is like a whole bunch of screenings right. of a whole bunch of films. And what we do is we try to create dynamic experiences around black TV and film and create that film festival feel, but just one at a time, like a red carpet feel. And we try to go after movies that either have some type of activism attached to it mm -hmm. or a good a good type of topic like black love. We, we, we screened the photograph, which was, it was supposed to be the new Love Jones, but I, I think they missed the mark. Um, another thing people know me for is Cultural Lounge Jacks, which I call it an event incubator. It started off as kind of like just a happy hour and we would do different things like karaoke and things but we started to get into a more enrichment based type of events mm -hmm. where we can get together and it started a time period where social unrest was very high because the pandemic and uh, police brutality kind of merged into one space all at the same time mm -hmm. and people were looking for an outlet and that was last year and so I think we provided that and now it's more than an outlet now it's a platform and so that's my that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, hey. Did I cover everything? You did. I didn't know how long I was supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> we have a conversation. So okay, we're we just going to talk, and we're going to just flow. So tell us about uh, what you have coming up, what you have recently done. Uh, welcome to the Club of Published Authors. Yes. So share with us about your book. Also, what you have coming up. Okay. So... With the book, and since I ended on Culture Lounge, the, the book that we started was based around a Black Writers Matter workshop that we had with Melinda Rackley from Rackhouse Publishing. Mm -hmm. And so she was teaching us really at a Culture Lounge, so at a, at a weekly happy hour that we have at the Cookbook Restaurant, she was teaching us how to self-publish a full book. And you know how I am. I knew I, I knew good and well I wasn't about to write no whole book. You know, I'm trying to just keep it together. This is why we need Coach Get You Together uh, uh, to duplicate herself throughout the entire <laughs> universe. So, because I don't know how you're going to keep everybody together. But long story short, there were a few people who were ready to take that path. Mm -hmm. And there were, most of us were not. And so she gave us the opportunity to be in a compilation book where you only had the responsibility to do one chapter. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I can do one chapter and, and, and help others get their one chapter done. And so that was in February, and we launched that book on James Weldon Johnson's birthday, mm -hmm. June 17, 2021. And it's called Ten Toes Down, and it's basically stories about, you know, Ten Toes Down, you hear it in songs and things like that, and sometimes it's associated with being a stand-up person for your family or mm -hmm. for your spouse. A lot of times in the in the in the current hip-hop era it's about being ten toes down for maybe another gang member or 
somebody who's doing what you're doing professionally. And we took we took that concept of just grittiness, steadfastness, loyalty, mm-hmm. and talk about it in our lives and other contexts as well. And so with that being said, we launched it and it went so well, just launching six new, completely newly published authors mm-hmm. and then mixing them in with uh, our publisher, who is an award winning author. And now we have another volume coming out that's going to have 12 authors in it. Some of them are already published, but some of them are brand. Most of them are brand new authors as well. Mm -hmm. So it kind of turned into like we're creating an author army through Ten Toes Down volumes. And so we have three volumes that we're going to do that we're committed to. And then we're going to see kind of where it goes and where how it evolves from there. So that was from Culture Lounge Jacks. Movie wise, Black Films Matter is planning to do something in Orlando. So Candyman is coming back out. A lot of people have sworn that they'll never watch that again. So the old one, it's, it's a wrap for the old one. But the new one, I'm, I'm interested to see how Jordan Peele, he's a he's a brilliant mind. And, mm-hmm. he, you know, if you know Jordan Peele, you know Get Out and Us. So I'm curious to see how he's going to take an old movie and, and revamp it and bring it back and do the 2021 version. We were actually supposed to do that last year mm-hmm. and the pandemic slowed down everything in the, in the film industry. So... We're excited about that and excited about branching out to Orlando and, and expanding how we had originally intended to. I'm excited about that. Now, I'm not going to watch the movie, but I might Understood. need to take the trip. Understood. <laughs> you know how we do. We always got, you know, it's funny. We usually do an after party with the movie, but when we started talking to Orlando, they started talking about a, a pre, pre-show pre happy hour and an after party and everything. So, in Orlando, it's going to be a big to-do, hopefully. So, we'll see what kind of partners we can get to come together and, and make that happen. Because Orlando is, it's a, it's a different structured city than Jacksonville. Right. So we have to, we have to approach things differently, but I think that they're used to seeking out things like that because they're in such a high tourist traffic place. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I, I'll, uh, I know for me, uh, when you did Judas and the Black Messiah, uh, having the opportunity to be one of the business sponsors and walking into the movie theater, seeing my logo plastered on the backdrop, I was like, wow. Um, And also being able to do a red carpet interview, going inside the theater and seeing my company's information like big screen was uh, awing to me, as well as it made me think bigger. Definitely, definitely. I, I, that's really the goal behind it, because to see it, it, to see your name in lights, you know, the, the Bible says that he'll make your name great. Yes. And so being able to see a uh, physical representation of that on the big screen, you know, we usually do big movies like that, Judas and the Black Messiah. But I'll say it was even more special doing it with an indie film out mm-hmm. of Jacksonville, Kuan Goza, which was written by Ebony Payne English, who's a, she's a local author, educator, poet here. Because now it wasn't just the businesses who got that. It was also local models and the actors and the people that she used. And I think that it does. It kind of it expands your mind. And once you expand it a little bit, it doesn't go back. So now it's like you see the potential of even taking further steps. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it on uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars Stadium. They got that big jumbotron. Yeah. Coach Michelle, get you together, get you right. You can put both of them on there. Get you space. together and right. And right, both of them. Right now. Both of them. Listen, I'm really excited. And to, we often talk uh, because it was funny how we met. Mm-hmm. And it was when we met, it was as if we had known each other like for a long time. Like right. we instantly clicked. And uh, we began to have conversations and one of the things that we discovered about each other and we called each other extractors, Mm -hmm. uh, being able to go into somewhere, going to an event, going to a setting and be able to extract things out that even if it's something that you don't need, you extract it out for something that someone else needs. Um, So I know that is one of the things that we have in common. Um, Also, the desire to see people people be greater than what they currently are because sometimes we're uh, we're not able to see beyond what we've been exposed to and when you have someone who has been exposed to a greater level um them being able to share their thoughts and their experience and that's what i found in you uh because remember i said listen i i don't know too many people i've sat down and just told them 
all of the stuff that I do. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I kind of give it to people in bits and pieces. And I was like, you were one of the people I found that I was able to run what I do as a person and as a business from beginning to end, um, just because of the capacity. Uh, I see you do that in the lives of others over and over again. Uh, talk about that. Share about the passion that you have for that. You know, it's lonely at the top. And not to say that I've reached some pinnacle that other people can't reach or whatnot, but I think where that came from was during college, I worked the entire time. And I ended up getting some exposure. And that's what we're talking about. You know, mm-hmm. extraction usually comes from somebody being exposed to something and being able to let you know, you know, hey, you can go this way or that way. So I had a lot of exposure working with the companies I was working with while I was in college. Mm-hmm. And for example, just reading personal growth books instead of books only to study for college or mm-hmm. only to study for a course. And it allowed me to start experiencing things early, like 19, 20, 21 my friends couldn't go. And so I think that's where the passion started to develop because I started to get them involved in some of those companies that I was working with. And a lot of it was just uh, direct sales companies, whether, you know, things like Mary Kay and things like that, just because it was an introduction to entrepreneurship. And that's, that's, Mm -hmm. I think who I really, who I really try to do that with Mm -hmm. because I, I, I see so much in people and, and I saw it in myself and maybe, maybe had somebody do that for me. So it's just kind of like passing the, or paying it forward. That's what I was trying to think of that phrase, paying it forward, what people have done for me. I'm also not a first generation business owner. So I had the benefit of having, seeing my dad and my grandfathers, both of them in business for themselves and being able to share. I think my purpose was, you know, to be able to share that with other people who maybe didn't have that same experience or right. maybe their maybe their lineage and genealogy didn't go that route. And so now we can share information. I'm big on, you know, we, we met each other through Kwanzaa. Mm-hmm. And so Ujama is, is I don't remember what, what specific word we were doing that day that we were supposed to speak. Right. It might have been Ujama. I don't remember, but. It might have been Ujama. It might have been. It might have been. We were, we were speaking, but long story short, that was a, a huge collaborative effort because there wasn't like a staple Jacksonville Kwanzaa event. Right. And. In that setting, though, you were you were giving good information. The other speakers and panelists were giving information to excel people. And the, the further we can help everybody else excel mm-hmm. in their own gifts and in their own lane, it's just going to be better for everybody. So I think part of it is just for self-preservation alone. I mean, even if right. it wasn't in my heart, it, it, it would benefit me for the other people around me to be doing better. Because yes. they can lift me up when I'm not doing well and vice versa. And we can kind of continue moving forward. Yeah, and that took me back to um, that clubhouse that we were on mm-hmm. with Toya. And uh, she had said, Miss, get you together. You know, tell us about yourself. And uh, for a long time, I was like, you know, I'm so much older than them. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know why they keep bringing me in this room. And then uh, Toya said something that really struck me. And she was like, you're like that auntie. Mm-hmm. She's like, you're like that um, that auntie that tells you the truth. And she was like, we need you in our generation because a lot of us grew up as term key kids. Mm-hmm. We were raised by the television. Parents were working or parents were missing. And she was like, we need people like you in our space who's not going to be afraid to tell us the truth. Yeah. So that really opened me up to really start accepting um, speaking engagements, which is how I ended up. Being at that engagement, right. I was like, this is not my crowd. Right, right, right. But I'm so glad that um, like two years prior, I went through a just show up to wherever people would ask me. I would just show up and I was able to make sound connections. And that night was pivotal because mm-hmm. I was able to make sound connections that still are connected. Me and you. Right. Uh, and then uh, I also laughed because... We you teaching me how to post the stuff on right, right, right. Just on little, Instagram. Hey, just added the story. If you just somebody tag you, just add it. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I might be able to do this. Right. And then when uh, we walked in, I was like, I think that's that Trey guy. You was like, Miss get you together. You miss get you right. I was. Like, I've been saying it long for like at least six months. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, huh? Miss get you right. So it does. Um, 
mean a lot to be able to experience things that you normally wouldn't have. That was like my first Kwanzaa event. Like I, I know about Kwanzaa, you know, but to go to an event that's specific for the different days of Kwanzaa, seeing some of the rituals that they do, mm -hmm. seeing some of the, um, being exposed to what it means and how far back it goes for right. us. Uh, that, that was fun. It yep, really was. Yep. Uh, and then I was like, I, I was the only chick on the platform. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, it was Savita's event. So it was, yes. it was Savita. So y'all, y'all, you know, I was like, the woman was running it. And we had a woman chef. We did. And a, and a woman bartender. That I day. was so, like, uh, okay, I'm, I might can get with y'all this. Y'all was getting the work done. Y'all yes. was the fellas do some talking. Yes. And so uh, it was a great experience. So, with you being um, an instructor, with you doing a lot of things with promoting, how did the pandemic affect you? Oh, it shut. It, it really is the reason the, the the chapter in my in my book or the chapter that I wrote in the book is about the two months from when they when DeSantis finally called it mm -hmm. to kind of when we opened back up because Florida Florida had a very abbreviated pan, pandemic guideline quarantine shut down so the pandemic was going on but florida and some other places weren't weren't participating in the same at the same rate as right. others and to answer your question i didn't handle it well at all in the beginning because i was already going through some other changes very recently i moved to jacksonville in, in august of 2019 and so as i as i moved to jacksonville and was getting acclimated to the city and the personalities in jacksonville and things like that and having a we had a comedy show that we were doing my partner Aaron Day and I and uh, he's my partner with Black Films Matter but which was originally Gainesville Black Wall Street which was like a marketing and uh, promotions company for for black owned businesses mm -hmm. and everything was just stalled everything that we built was based on bringing people together and that was exactly what they're telling you you cannot do anymore right and so you now I made some bad decisions I also had a family member who was battling cancer mm -hmm. and she was uh, it was actually my aunt uh, so my mom's closest sister in age there's four of them and we weren't really getting full reports on you know what was going on with her I think you know we're adult children now I guess of, of our parents and you know my aunts have have some kids as well and so we we felt like they were sheltering us from the information that we wanted to know so there was just a lot of volatility and then you have the not being able to make money the same way you normally make money, mm -hmm. not being able to see everybody, not being able to move how you normally move, just and then on top of that, seeing what happened with Breonna Taylor, Maude Arbery, I think it was before her, mm -hmm. and then in May you have George Floyd, mm -hmm. all in just a short time period. So it, it was rough. It was very rough. And having to adapt, having to self care, having to check yourself. You know, and getting out of character, getting out of pocket, you know, and even reflecting back on and owning up to my stuff, you mm -hmm. know, was 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 my challenge during during that time period. Knowing, hey, you know, part of the reason you're in this situation is because you weren't prepared. You know, another part of the situation is you weren't you, you, you're not responding well to some of these adversities and you're lashing out and different things like that, which is not something you can do as a promoter and as a, a, a public figure. You can't be known as the bad guy. You can't be, you know, biting right. people's heads off and, you know, doing different things like that. That, you know, really is just the stuff that I used to do in college. It's kind of like surfacing back up. Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you haven't dealt with that yet. So it was rough in the beginning, but it was a blessing at the same time because, one, it, it created a story. Two, it created the Culture Lounge Jacksonville. And so I, I never used to do anything weekly. As far as events, it was always planning for 90 days or 60 days or 30 days to do something big. And so now having the responsibility of coming up with something new every Thursday, back again, we're back again every Thursday. And um, also mentoring other event curators. I, I don't I normally don't do that because nobody wants to take the risk on the film because it costs a lot of money to do what we do with Black Films Matter. So if you're not ready for that, it's it's, it's not advised. Right. <laughs> don't, you know, go, go, you know. You can go slow to go fast. And that's what I think I learned during the pandemic was, what is this slow pace like? Because I'm always, you know, 150 miles per hour. So it got to slow me down. And I started gardening during the pandemic. Uh, so that's very meditative. And, and you can kind of pick up some principles that you already know. But when you're seeing them in action and your hands on the dirt and you're 
you have to wait for you know the seed time to harvest in real wow. time you know that that was really really impactful for me you know taking those things and bringing it back into 2021 and bringing it into business and growing and all that good stuff i know for me uh the pandemic it was a pivot Mm -hmm. I remember right when the pandemic was starting, it may have actually been the week before we shut down. Uh, the week before it shut down was the Denim and Pearls. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was just at the moment that we was like, boom, we out running. I, I had a meeting with my support staff and I planned my calendar two years in advance. Uh, it was a practice I took on as an event planner, so I plan my stuff. So when I'm planning other people's stuff, my stuff is already in motion. Right. Uh, and it was like, yes, we're doing our fallback session. And like the next day or two, it was like, Shoo. I was like, whoa, so what does this look like? And I remember um, I did a live because I, I heard the Lord speak so clearly and said, fix your focus. And I did a live and I entitled it, fix your focus. And that was the moment that I began to look at things differently, you know, and for a focus, a focus is to um, intentionally not look at something so that you can intentionally look at something. So in the process of me figuring out, okay, so what do I need to do to fix my focus? It began to open up to me and things began to just fall in play. Like it was oh, yeah. like, oh, what just happened? Oh my God, I got to do something right now because things were moving so fast. And I mean, when I said expounded i was like okay right. with my life coaching certification i'm such a hands-on person so i was like yeah i i can't see this being a virtual um right process the pivot was you need to figure out how to make this a virtual process and in doing so now like now i have coaches i've certified all over the country that was the pivot yeah. Because making that pivot opened up not just what I was doing, but it opened up the prospect of you can do it everywhere all at the same time. That's right. The, the pivot, it's funny you say that too, because we actually had something planned for, I want to say it was the third weekend of March. So DeSantis called it March 13th, which mm -hmm. actually so happens to be the same day that they that happened with Breonna Taylor. Mm -hmm. And the movie that we had a we had an event planned and it was supposed to be a Madam CJ Walker brunch and panel situation for women entrepreneurs and because Madam CJ Walker is like the, the epitome. Right. Like, and so they had this limited Netflix series that was coming out and we were doing like a brunch and panel and it was we had everything planned out, we had the venue, and we had to pivot into a virtual. And my biggest challenge with the virtual was trying to monetize tickets when you know the experience is completely different. So right. we, we ended up doing a virtual mimosa party, and the, the gift in that was that we were able to meet Alelia Bundles, who is the autobiographer of Madam yes. C.J. Walker and the adoptive great-great-granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And it gave us access for later, which now we're using, but it was hard to see that right there on the spot because I was focusing on the wrong thing, which was the money. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how are we going to get this money? And, you know, the children are never begging for bread. So I was just, I right. wasn't, I wasn't like fully acknowledging what I already knew. And, you know, there, there's this metaphor that I've heard somebody use and it's basically the difference between a floodlight and a laser they have about the same amount of energy but a floodlight is spread all the way out so all i can do is kind of shine some light on everything that's around it right. but a laser can cut through metal and that laser focus is is what's going to allow you to really push forward and you know what i mean when you're not focused when you look into the left and the right yes when you have accidents in the car you know it, it, there's so many different metaphors and analogies on that just that focus yeah so trey tell us where we can get the book show us the book absolutely so Ten Toes Down book is available on Amazon, but we would prefer you get it from one of the authors and you can find out all about all the authors, their Instagrams on Ten Toes Down book on Instagram. That's at Ten Toes Down book spelled all the way out. 
and there's a lot of transparency in this. So, you know, we overcome by the word of other people's testimony. So definitely dig in here and get your answers. Take the meat and leave the bones. But great, great stories around all, all the author, authors. I think I might get on volume three. Get on volume three. It comes out of Black History Month, February. I might get on February volume three. February 2022. And thank you again for coming in and watching another episode. If you enjoyed this episode, it doesn't have to stop here. Meet me over at my Facebook page at 630. Trey will be on with us. You'll be able to talk. You'll be able to ask questions. Trey, it's really been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you again for coming. I am Master Life Coach Michelle Kennedy. Miss Get You Together. And as Trey say, Miss Get You Right. Get You Right. Sign it off. Have a good night. With Embrace You, I found a career. At Embrace You, I found a family. At Embrace You, I found me. Are you the strong friend who's always giving advice? Are you the one always mentoring and coaching? Have you thought about being a certified life coach? Because here at Embrace You, we have room for you in our family. I am Embrace You. I am Embrace You. I am Embrace You. And you can be Embrace You.